It's Scary Perry the star of Windy City Heat! Oh! This is my one chance story that I'm going to tell myself without the other two assholes present with me. This is my town, Chi Town, Chicago, Illinois. My, de my fans deserve the true story of Windy City Heat and all the shit that I got and if I was behind any of it or not. Some say I'm the best private dick there ever was. And let me tell you something about being the best private dick there ever was. There's only me that could be the best private dick there ever was. How great of an actor I am? It's called real acting. It's called be being the best on the scene. And when you see the look in my face, the way I react, how I go across doing things. I mean, I tried to be just as simple as I could. Look at that, there's nine cameras, nine spy cams going off with three real cameras around me uh, taking the shots. As you see, Bert and Don and Mole sitting up in the... People tell me constantly that I'm like a young Mar that I look like a young Marlon Brando if my hair was short, and I tell them that I'm not going to cut my hair because I'm a rocker. My motivation is to be the top, to be the number one. I mean, I'm tired of seeing everybody else be on top when I know it should be me, and I don't want to say it like I'm conceited or like I'm stuck up because I really am not. You know, when I, when I told people before that I want this movie to be one of the top ten, I meant it like that. Because, oh sure, I would love it to be the number one film of all time. But, see, if I say it's going to be the number one, it's going to be the best film ever, it's like, oh yeah, this guy's conceited, we don't want to deal with him. The ride over. We're, Don and I are in the back of a, a limousine. And we're right now entering L.A. Center Studios. And he says to me, he goes, he goes, you could be a movie star. And then he goes, and you could be, and if you screw this up, you're going to be working at that print shop. That's my cousin's business, Master Graphics Printing in Reseda. And if I'm going to be working at that print shop for the rest of my life, well, I even... Even my cousins are telling me, and my aunt even says, you know, it's been a long time, and you've been wanting this for a long time. Well, here's your chance. These Now, these clips here, are, those are old classic clips from, like, the mid-'90s, 1996. Now, that scream was at the gong, or no, at Griffith Park, where I'm screaming... Now, where I say, you know, that he wouldn't let go of me in a gay aspect. I mean, I was being interviewed, and I just... You know, I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm not a fag. I'm not gay. Uh, happy gay is one thing, but I'm not a faggot. Back in the '60s, there was gay meaning happy, because I was born in the '60s. Now where I'm gonna, where Don goes, you're gonna unleash the fury. And this day, my throat was killing me. My throat was really ripped. More or less, every time Don pisses me off is when I'm releasing the fury. And lately, for the past 13 years plus, Don just loves to piss me off by doing all sorts of, you know, opposite things that, you know, the Stone Fury kicking the ass way of life is where Stone Fury just proves to everybody that, that look, it's my rules, my way, and this is how I'm going to do things. And I'm not taking your shit. That's more or less how I am in real life. I mean, I've had verbal fights with cops. I've had physical fights with cops. And I've even gone to jail for both. From when I was a teenager, when I used to empty swimming pools, skateboarding. Now, right now, we are entering um, the uh, audition studio <clears throat> where I meet Lisa Kishel, a.k.a. Jiggly Wriggly. A.K.A. Uh, Susan, Susan B. Anthony. Now, I'm looking at those tits, and it's like, oh, my God. Mamma mia, I want to hug her. Those are, pop, those are papa titties, like, you know? It's like, yeah, I go, well, you're, you are the ultimate ultimate. I mean, I'd love to fuck that chest. God, I'd like to just 
stick my you know what in between those and blah, blah, blah. I've had problems with mole in the past. Mole's a fucking idiot. Well, well, there's there's some Polish people that are great people. This scene right here is where they're on my cable show, and I didn't really want him there. And he's and now there's the band Angelus, some friends of mine. We're just we're best friends. Uh, now where Mole starts to hug me, and he goes, "Oh, my best friend." And he's just playing the mole, the mole, the Don and Mole game against Perry, where Mole's always trying to be my best friend and stuff, and it's kind of funny. Well, now this is where um, Carson Daly comes out of the uh, audition room and looks just like me, or tries to look just like me. First off, look at the brim that he's got on. It's not even formed like a fedora, like the fedora form. It's flat. It looks like shit. His collar's not up like I wear my collar. Up. Like I'm the Fonz. Okay? He's got this... I'm looking at myself. Wants to be like me. And I'm thinking... And I'm thinking through my head... This guy needs his ass kicked. Bad. This is somebody that needs his ass kicked. Bad. Real bad. Real bad. Good. You know, they want to see one other guy. Some scary, fair. Oh, right there. Scary, I should have popped him one. Is that what you're going with me? Perry. 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 Scary, oh, fairy. Oh, okay. so. I, should, I wanted Perry, to punch him, but I mean, I got those two. I got uh, Don and Mole there, so, you know, I kind of felt like, you know, I'll leave them alone. I'll leave this guy alone. All right, Perry, you got your lines? Yeah. All right, remember, what are we thinking? Unleash the fury. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going into this audition, and I'm thinking, hey, the audition was made for me. Dane Cook, <laughs> Roman Polanski, boy, I fucked with everybody. I made everybody think I have no clue who Roman Polanski is. I did a I did a uh, book report back in elementary school on Roman Polanski and on Sharon Tate. And I know for a fact that was not Roman Polanski. I didn't know Dane Cook yet, but I know for a fact that was not Roman Polanski. I'm trying, they're trying to tell me where, where my mark is. And my mark was two marks to my right, which is where the black tape is, not, not the two white marks. Wrong tape, that's at the end of the stage. Back up. Are you talking this okay, the black the black tape is my mark. And I'm not... Okay, I'm wrong. There it is. That was my mark. And they were fucking with me on that. Hard drinking, hard talking, hard living tough guy. You see the smirk in my face? I'm thinking to myself, these guys have auditioned all all of the guys that I've looked up to in this field and I'm going to blow them all out of the water and I'm going to show Hollywood who the real Stone Fury is oh now when they talked about Carson Daly being <laughs> they talked about Carson Daly being a real, real he did a good reading on it like he's a joke Okay, he's a big pussy that needs to be shown who a real fucking actor is in this town. And I'll show who the best actor is for this role. And that's myself, Perry Caravello, also known as Scary Perry. My name is Stone. Stone Fury. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm about ready to kill these fucking guys. When Mole kept interrupting me on the audition, uh, it, it's like it's like being a little kid in elementary school. You know, I'm like bullied again. It's like I'm being bullied again. It's like somebody should bash your fucking head in with a baseball bat like you think you're going to do with me. Red bat, blue bat. I'm tied up. No, 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 no. I got to be untied and I'll smack a bat across your fucking head before you can even imagine it. But no, Mole's got his fucking head up his ass where he thinks he can be better than me. Fuck him. He's not better than me. Same with Don. They're not better. Than, neither one of those two scumbags are better than me. I'm a better actor. I'm a better uh, 
improvis, uh, yeah, improv specialist, and I'm better at doing whatever they give me as an act slash actor slash comedian. I'm going nuts over the fact that these two fucking guys aren't allowing me to do my audition. Either they want, either they want me to fuck it up, or like Mole with his crazy ass drug problem, uh, thinks that I'm gonna that there's no problem that I got the part. Now see, yep, you know Mole, Mole's a little crazy. I I wasn't nervous about getting the part. I knew the part was for me. There's like nobody else could do Stone Fury but me. See where I says, now look, let me read it my version. Because it's my style. It's the way, my version is me. It's the way I wrote it. It's not their version. Okay, if a writer is gonna write a, a piece with me, write a, write a script for me, to do a reality show similar to like Windy City Heat, Stone Fury, they need me in the writer's room with the way I will say it, the way I will act it as they go to write it, because I will rewrite it with the, the writer, my version. I don't know what the fuck happened with Bobcat's megaphone. My name is Stone, Stone Fury. Now I'm, I'm starting again. This is my city, my town. You know, my name is Stone, Stone Fury. But there's trouble. You know, my, my acting coach, Ivan Marcota, the Van Mar Academy, called me seven times on my pager. This is when I had a pager. And left me messages saying that you are the, you've done the best audition of all my students. Now, this is where I did a good reading, but I'm, I'm debating myself. Thank you, Perry. Good luck. And now, and now... Roman Polanski, a.k.a. Dane Cook, is, you know, like, hmm, did he get it? Did he not get it? Don Barris wants me to get this part. You... Well, Don, Don's going, look, I got to get this part for you, man. Who's Stone Fury? I'm Stone Fury. And what I'm thinking is... I feel bad if, if they're gonna like let me go, but now I gotta let them know who Stone Fury is. And Don and Don wants me to like let it all hang out. And he wants me to read it, my version, which is the best. No, no, please listen. Uh, it feels very aggravating and very frustrating to have to have to try to be able to control Don, because Don controls everybody. Nobody controls Don. I mean, here's here's you'll see the funny part after I read it my version and and Roman Polanski starts to clap, meaning that I got the role. Watch. You'll see, you'll see the best reading that I rewrote my way, the way Stone Fury would be. Hey, the name? The name is Stone. Stone Fury. It was my town, my town, my city, Chi Town, Chicago, Illinois. I'm feeling really numb. City of big buildings, big shoulders, big hearts, big, 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 big. I meant broken dreams, but big dreams. Yeah, Best private dick there ever was. Yeah, but that was a long time ago. This is so much better than the other reading because it's written the way I would say it, not the way they would have me say it. And it works. And boy, does it work. Oh, boy, does it work. Because look at the way they are thinking. We know he's got this role. Congratulations, Terry. Guys, I think we found a Stone Fury. Oh yeah. When I when I got the part of Stone Fury in Windy City Heat, felt great. It's like finally. Ten fucking years down down saying, Oh, I'm gonna make you a star, I'm gonna make you a star. It felt great. I've I've dreamt of this for over a decade. And if if and it's finally here. 
and it felt fantastic. Well, now what's going on here is these two guys are, are trying to make it look like I'm, they're super happy that I finally got the part. I don't know if they're really this happy, but I know that they were happy that I got the role. Don likes to go a little overboard, you know, jumps on my head, sits his fat ass on my fucking head. He gives me... <laughs> it was funny, though, you know, when they jumped on me the way they did. You know, when I watched this over at Paramount Pictures uh, at the um, film premiere party, um, I, I couldn't stop laughing for through the whole movie. And I'm, and I'm not looking at myself as me being... As I'm getting hurt, you know, I'm looking at that guy on screen and I'm seeing this this guy went through a lot of shit. Now, this is when we first got to LA Center Studios. We're in the elevator and uh, this is when Don just got out of the bathroom and he says uh, that he saw Reese Witherspoon uh, go by him when he left the bathroom. And, um, and then uh, Mole goes, did you get any Reese's Pieces? The big three are the uh, Three Stooges of the New Millennium, and that's us. The three kooks that are making Hollywood see who who's, who the three maniacs are that come into their comedy club, that come into their restaurant, that come into their grocery store, their theater, their nightclub, whatever. And that's us, Don, Mole, and myself. The big three, Don, Mole, and myself, are conquering Hollywood. It's about time. Hello? Now, 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 watch this. You're going to see that Mole tries to show that... Yeah, Mo, yeah, you're hungry, all right. Mr. John Quincy Adams! That's Mole. Mole's doing John Quincy Adams. Nobody else. He does a very good voiceover because it took a long time for me to... I never met John Quincy Adams face to face. Other than realizing and other than reading online who did the voice of uh, John Quincy Adams and Miles Standish on Crank Yankers. I've known Mole since 1992, but Mole didn't do this English faggot voice uh, John Quincy Adams till maybe six months after I knew who he was. This was weird, okay? It's like they would, they would put some weird shit in this office to either make me feel uncomfortable or make me feel weird. But now... Um, Right after the phone hangs up, who walks into the off into our office? But <clears throat> Mole slash John Quincy Adams slash Miles Standish on Cranky Anchors. They're trying to show me that all these guys, including Governor uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, went to audition for this part, which I know is bullshit. Bullshit. There was only one man for this role. This film was written for me. It was written for me way back when I first met Don. And bottom line, this is me. Now, wait a second. They, they, they go to audition, these three girls. Now, the blonde next to me, I know, wanted me. I know she wanted me. But the brunette to my far left... Not the black chick. Well, of course, not the black chick. I'm full-blooded Italian, so I want to stick with my Italians. Um, and then I've dated Orientals. I've dated white. I've even dated black girls. And they're great girls. Those are the Jigglies, baby. Those are my big-breasted babies. Some of them work for Hooters. But the brunette to my far left, I would have said, okay, yeah, we can use her as Jiggly Wriggly. Don gets girls because he likes to whip out his big schlong all the time and some some of these fucking stripper bitches like his obnoxiously big fat skanky ugly fucking Uncle Fester dorky body okay 
Lisa Kishel, better known as Lisa, uh, Susan B. Anthony, also Jiggly Wrigley, uh, comes in the room, and then Bobcat goes, oh, yeah, we're looking for a girl with brown hair with a big rack, you know, nice, nice, nice chest, good smile. And right as I'm trying to let them know what yeah, Susan B. Anthony. Uh, okay, and then Mole goes, hey, hey, Bobcat, how about Susan over here? So Mole, more or less, opened his mouth and said, hey, you know, and he, he called the shot. You know, let's hire Susan B. Anthony to be, jig, to be uh, Jiggly Wrigley. She doesn't kiss me because that's just what she didn't want to do. She would, I guess they told her not to kiss me that, uh, you know, let's make it look like uh, Perry doesn't get any girls. I guess that's Don Barris's thing because Don Barris tries to keep all the women away from me. He does what he can to keep chicks away from me. You know, when, I, when I'm at the comedy store and I put my arms around girls and say, get away from those girls. He always gives me shit. That's a woman, you know. This is supposed to be our first Hollywood scene where uh, I get thrown in the garbage dumpster, which I was thrown into three times. Uh, this, this is my big Hollywood scene, and I'm looking forward to it being, you know, the best ever. And this is where we are, the three stooges of the new millennium, the big three. Okay. Here's Don's... Watch, watch the way Don says this. Disgusting. Uh, he's trying to fuck up the scene. He doesn't know how to. He doesn't know how to act. He's trying to add lib the scene. I don't care if you got film going. You don't know what the fuck you're doing because you don't know. What... He because I know he's fat. Don thinks I'm fat, and I always give him shit about the way he is because he's fat, and he knows he needs to lose weight, and he doesn't try. I'm going to turn this movie into the best Now, this is where I rewrote the scene. And, he, and, he, and I, I dropped the eye thinking like I was a little kid when I used to beat the fuck out of kids back in Chicago. I used to drop my left eye and just, bam. I would kill them almost. Well, I would, you know, kill them as, a, as an elementary school kid would, would say that they're, they're going to kill you. You know, when they beat you up. They're there. perfection. Yeah. And I used to do that yeah. all the time. You Squint. Really I, I, when you went like this, with, you remember when you? Yeah. It doesn't. Oh, it doesn't scare yeah. people now. It's you just a ahead. joke now. But I mean, back when I was a kid, you know, the eye, the eye used to mean, you know, you either <laughs> understand one thing and that is it, or you're gonna, you're gonna be suffering. All right. This is this is the real scene where I get. Uh, well, well, well. So this this is the real this is the real scene for the movie. My performances are superb. Don Don's doing doing his job, but he's but he you know I could see where Don could be a lot better of an actor, and the same with Mo. I could also see it. Now here's the uh, the two directors of stunts that are throwing me into uh, the trash the, the two stunt guys that threw me in they are the they are the uh, directors of stunts from um, um oh shit I forgot the stunt company Bob Bobcat Bobcat wasn't upset he was just he wanted to improve the scene by throwing throwing some crap or some poop into the garbage dumpster and I'd say wait a second no 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 you don't want to do that and I'm and I'm thinking wait a second he's gonna get bags of fertilizer are you serious yeah but now this scene I did three times and um the first one was with a mattress one mattress and I and I hit the mattress hard, so then we did it again and with a, a second mattress on top, and then I I I liked that and, and I kind of felt comfortable with it, but then uh, Bobcat goes no 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 we got to do this with 
with uh, crap or poop, and then we, you know, they threw uh, all crap and poop, and um, it smelt like you were in a uh, um, a cow path back in the Midwest. <laughs> I was pissed. Yes, yeah, because we had to do this scene four times. And uh, this is when Don says, or, you know, before this interview, is when Don says, you know, hire, say you want to hire a stuntman. So, okay, now I want to hire a stuntman to, to be thrown in the uh, garbage dumpster. Now watch who they pick for my stunts. I have poop on my, I have, I have uh, manure on my face because uh, they go to throw me in the garbage dumpster. People recognize me at Gelson's Market in Tarzana constantly, people, you know, customers, because uh, I'm in there a lot. So, okay, here's Saul Stenberg with Green Bomb. Saul is, Saul is uh, supposed to be, if not already is, Jimmy Kimmel's cousin, or he's just another actor that plays as Jim Kimmel's cousin. And I immediately said, I want to go straight to dairy because I'm lactose intolerant. <clears throat> and, and yeah, you give me, you put milk in, you know, cow's milk, and uh, I uh, go... I gotta go to the toilet right away. I mean, because I I need lactate milk, so I don't you know end up doing diarrhea all day long. Not fuck me if I have to go do a scene. I have uh, cow's milk spiked into whatever I'm eating. Up up pulls mole on a motorcycle. Mole changes his name to become Tony Barbieri. Why? Because I'm Italian. And I get girls, and Mole's a Polak, dreams to be Italian. Mole's Polish slash Polak, dreams to be an Italian that can get girls like I get girls. Okay? I get girls because... Not because I, I, I think I'm like the greatest, like I think I'm an Arthur Fonzarelli from Happy Days, but because I, I'm smooth, I, I'm Italian, I'm, I'm just a handsome guy. Now up comes Adam Carolla that uh, that um, wants us, or, or no, he's doing this Bud Gladiator film called um, Oklahomos, which is funnier than shit. Hearing about this, I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, I'm shiny. Yeah. Okay. Don't put it in his face. It's kind of weird. I thought it was funny. Well, I mean, it was funny, but now... Um, he's Bart's, Bart's bothering me because he's kind of busy. Well, all right. So, so now, so now um, Adam Adam is asking... Oh, shit. Where were we? Oh, I made a comment about uh, The Man Show where they did the Harry Mogul ordeal, and I, th I thought that was funny as shit. And then I started making a comment about uh, that to uh, Adam. He goes, oh, well, you know, Jimmy pulled pulled the show. And now it's raining like fucking crazy. They spell my last name uh, with it with uh, uh, out an A, C-A-R-A-V-E-L-L-O. -L -L and they missed the A. Now watch this. Watch this. Here we go to the, the retro, the retro uh, trailer. Which is a piece of shit uh, camper, and I go and open the door, and out come these pigeons that are in between the screen door and the door. I don't know how the fuck they were able to put those pigeons in there like that, which is funny as shit. I laughed my ass off. Now, now here's some freak of a uh, actor that claims to be Charlton Heston. Now. And now they're telling me, you know, I got off off from a cameo. Off from a cameo. And then I go, you know, will you do, will you, uh, a cameo's an award. So how comes this this guy that looks like what happened to Charlton Heston when he had his, uh, his, uh, um, oh, where he had his stroke. And 
all of a sudden I go inside my, my trailer and there's shotgun shells like crazy. Uh oh. Here comes Sergio. We're here, we're queer. Let's get our asses in gear. That comment alone. Have you worn chaps before? One, it was funny as fuck. But two, you try to get my ass in gear by trying to stick your dick up my ass and I kill you. I'll fucking kill you. I mean, I'm going to walk out of this effing trailer. No, no, not the set. In, in that, that in and in this, this in, the in the rain, rain I'm like, wait, I'm going to wear chaps with, with a thong, no shirt, and a cowboy hat in the rain to be in this. I'm feeling like you got to be out of your fucking mind. Do you need help taking anything off? or? You sure? Yes. Now, now, right here where he goes, do you need a help? There's no fucking way I want you to put your hands on me. I'll kill you. Don't even think you can touch me. And he goes and grabs a sheet and he wants to hold up his sheet while I change. So here's so here's Fred opening up my the door to my dressing room. I got a thong in my hand. So I walk in there, yeah, thong's like a like a, a jock strap. I didn't know that there were there were spy cams in my dressing room. <coughs> I don't mind. So I don't mind my ass being on camera. I don't mind my whole body being on camera. As long as I get paid for it, fine. The, the thong, thong felt like a jock strap. And he just, he just, you know, he was like wanted to watch me dress. It's, it's like being in a, um, in in a uh, modeling set where you got these. These fucking gay ass actors that want to stare at you while you're changing. It's like so uncomfortable. Luke Perry, I know you anywhere. My name is not Luke. I think San Sergio or uh, Santiago, whatever the fuck his name was, but I um he wanted to he wanted to touch me there, meaning meaning touch me in my private parts, and I would not allow him. What are you in? What production is this? I'm sorry. I run around all the time. I work out. I've been... But I don't think I'm in good shape. I think I'm in eh -eh shape. You know, I don't work out enough. I just... There's just no time to always be in the gym five days a week. Don and Mole all of a sudden come up the... Come up the uh, yeah, right there. You come in here without knocking. You don't knock first. I felt like get the fuck out of my room. I look like shit. I'm in I'm in uh I'm in this faggot clothes and I want out of these fucking clothes. This is the wrong fucking scene. This should not have been And now now Sergio wants to come into my fucking dressing room. I'm about ready to put my foot through his fucking stomach or his chest or up his ass. Now comes now comes the bedroom scene. I can't lie about this, okay? Because I'm real. My, my acting I'm a good actor because I'm real, and this is like a reality movie, and I know how to be the real me. Ivan Marcota is my uh, my uh, acting coach from uh, the, I, the from, blah, 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 from the Van Mar Academy. <clears throat> He was the best acting coach, who's who used to be a a, a wrestler boxer, and he's got that firm attitude. And I mean, I love Ivan like a father. And I I swear to you, and I I mean, he means a lot to me as as an acting coach. I mean, the guy's getting up there in years, but he's like he's it. It's not easy to memorize lines. Okay, now we're doing the shake. Coffee, chop suey, a donut, beer, and here's what fucks me, piece of pizza, raw egg, and uh, Worcestershire sauce. And I drank this fucker down. I'm thinking this is what's gonna, this is what's gonna make Hollywood know that there ain't nobody that can fuck with me in this town. And I'm gonna pull this scene off, and I'm gonna blow 
everybody away. And I drank that fucker not once, because after the first time I drank it, it was like, oh God, I don't want to do this again. But then Bobcat goes, let's do it again. I go, oh, well, all right. So I did it again, and my, I felt my stomach starting to gurgle. You know, like you're about ready to puke. But I, but I did what I could to hold it down. And it felt like, oh, okay, going down, going down my throat the second time. This is like, uh oh, something's gonna happen bad. And I'm feeling it in my stomach. Something's gonna happen real bad. But I have to do a love scene with Jiggly. And I want, and I don't want to do this again because I had a good lunch. I ate well. I had a, I had a real nice lunch. And then all of a sudden, a couple minutes later, I'm feeling my stomach say, "Uh oh, you either get on the toilet and shit now, or you're fucked." Now, now in comes some wardrobe guy that starts fucking with her tits, and I know what he's doing. He's he's fixing those balloons. So it'll look like she's got huge fucking tits. No, I don't want any cheese puffs. So, um, I don't, I don't understand what I'm doing here. Why, why I'm? Oh yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm telling Bert to leave me alone with the food. Like I'm trying to tell him now that I'm fine. Bert, dude, I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. Well, I'm not sweating. All right, Spanish fly is a, uh, it's a uh, vitamin. It's actually, yeah, it's it sold at the city market up on um, Canoga and Nordoff in Chatsworth, not far from uh, Time Warner Studios. Um, and that Spanish fly stuff is, it's like Vivran, okay? And Vivran, Viagra, whatever. It it does everything. It, it gives you an, it gives you a lift and it gives you a hard on immediately, and it's it, it works. It really works. And in a way, that's kind of a commercial for Spanish Fly, because uh, shit, who knows? They they might want to use me for a promotion. Then again, this was a good movie to use Spanish Fly as a promotion. If I was able to have sex with Jiggly and I used the Spanish fly, she would have had some good cock. And I'm looking at those tits and I'm, and I'm saying, oh, here's Jiggly. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. All right, here's where Jiggly Wrigley says she's a, from the areas of a large chewing gum factory. And um, and I'm uh, just telling Jiggly, you know, oh, God, my stomach is about ready to explode. But I'm doing what I can. I'm holding my butt cheeks tight to not let me shit while I'm doing the scene. And I mean, they made, they fed me like fucking crazy for lunch. My stomach is like way out there. Oh, I would have been excited to have the sex scene, but it goes cut. Bobcat goes cut. In comes the double. Now, who plays my double but James St. James? When I first saw the double, it's like, number one, you don't look like me. Number two, you're three times my size. And number three, why the fuck are we using James as my body double? Wait a second. Now he's gonna be doing my stunt. Okay, now let me go take a shit and let me go take a shit now so I can come in and watch James fuck Jiggly. <coughs> now wait a second, I need to shit and shit real bad and if they don't let me do shit now in the trailer, I'm gonna pull this fucking underwear off and shit right here in the, in the uh, sound stage. Now, <clears throat> I didn't know they were going to leave the microphone on while I'm taking a dump. I thought that they would stop, the, you know, I thought that they would let the mic, you know, shut, be put on off. 
But no, hell no. You're going to hear every every chitin' sound while you're taking a dump, which was the funniest fucking scene ever. This scene was also on the um, on the uh, little promo that was online, and I was getting emails from all my rock band buddies saying, oh, hey, man, we were watching you take a shit in the movie, and it's like the funniest shit ever. <laughs> Uh, Don's Don's just trying to find out if I'm okay or if I'm sick or if I'm dying and he's fucking and he's trying to check it up on me and he's he's like it's fucking oh it hurt actually it fucking hurt oh man I mean I'm lactose intolerant and I mean when I have when I have look I now take medication uh be- because I can't have milk, cow's milk, you know, comfortably without taking lactate pills. And back then, I didn't know anything about lactate pills. I was only taking, um, like, Imodium Advanced. Now, Bert's trying to feed me again. Don Barris is telling Bert to feed me again. And uh, and I'm not saying anything and about Don telling Bert. Now it's like, look, the stunt double's fired. James St. James is fired. I don't want to see the stunt double there anymore. I'm going to be like Jackie Chan. Now Don's trying to start a fight with me. Don, you yelled at me. You yelled at me. Don always fights with me because he likes to make me pissed. And the more pissed off I am, the funnier the scene is. Okay, see where Bert goes, oh, you asked Don. Don't ask me. You asked Don. I didn't ask Don to get food. Okay, now here's where my double, James St. James, comes out with Jiggly Wriggly. Uh, Lisa Cashel, they came out of the uh, other sound stage where, where he says, oh, I just had a raise. Yeah, a raise where? Between your legs? They were supposed to be just fucking, but I don't know. I don't think it really, they really had sex. I thought it was like, okay, go through the door. Have a smile on your face. Oh, dude, I, I know Jiggly Wrigley. I know Lisa Cashel would be good in bed. You can just tell by the, by the, um, by the athletic figure that she has that she would be awesome underneath sheets. And they used that lotion stuff. They blew on it got hot. And then he used those clips. I would give her the best love ride of her life. The mole's making it look like he was watching a porno being filmed. Oh, she put her legs over her head. I'm at at the time. At the time, I was upset because I wanted to be in there fucking her, not not finding out that I got some stunt double in there doing the salami to her. It felt like, you know, oh, well, you got to have a stunt double for these scenes now. And I didn't like it. But see, when when uh, uh, they said you got to have a stunt man and I wanted a stunt man just for the shit in the dumpster, not for all my fucking scenes. The sex is not a stunt. It's a stunt if you want it to be a stunt. So here's where I... Here's where I say, um, look, I don't want any stuntmen to take my place anymore because I'm looking at me as another Jackie Chan where I do all my own stunts. Now, here's here's the scene, Red Bat, Blue Bat, where Mole plays the guy that is not paying attention to shit, but whatever is on those headphones. At the time, I'm feeling that Mole is going to pick up the wrong fucking bat and smack me upside the fucking head. And it scares, excuse me, it scares the shit out of me knowing that Mole's gonna not pick up the correct bat. So I keep, uh, so what's going through my mind is Mole, get the wrong bat the fuck out of there. There were two bats there because they wanted this, because they wanted, you know, Mole to pick up the, the rubber bat rather than the wooden bat. And the wooden bat was the mat, the was the red bat. 
Mole, Walter Mole Molinsky might want me to call him Tony Barbieri, but there's no fucking way on God's, God's given planet Earth I will call Mole Tony Barbieri unless I'm out to fuck with Don. Then I'll call Mole Tony Barbieri. Hey, Tony, how you doing, you know? Uh, Tony Barbieri. Ow! There, Don pulls my head back. Yeah, when he pulled my head back like that, that hurt. Uh, now I'm getting scared out of my fucking. Uh oh, I'm, I'm about, I'm about to lose my life. I'm about to die. But I can't believe that, you know, you're gonna let, you're gonna let mole smack me in the head. And Bobcat goes, cut, cut, cut. I didn't fight. How can I fight back? I'm tied up to a chair. How can I fight back? I, I'm not like my neighbor, the escape artist, Michael Majestic, that can escape that in, in less than 30 seconds. If, if I could have gotten loose, I would have, and I would have killed the both of those two fuckers. But I'm not my, neighbor, my uh, neighbor, Michael Majestic, that can escape from that shit like nothing. Mole's a fucking idiot. So now, so now they're like leaving me in the sound stage, all alone. So I'm like screaming at, "Hey, let me go, man! You fuckers! Oh, thanks, guys. They gotta leave me. They're gonna leave. Oh, and there goes the cameraman. Now he's leaving. Oh, thanks, cocksucker. And now goes one light, and I'm like, oh shit. And now out goes the rest of the lights in that room. And I'm like, woo! And I'm like, oh my God. <sighs> okay, and now I'm sitting there for about an hour, if not longer. Why don't you talk with politeness and say, Bert, it would be polite for you. Don yells at me because he likes to fuck with me all the time. Let's go. Let's move it, fuckface. Would you watch your fucking mouth? Well, watch your fucking mouth. That that was not cool, okay? Because Bart's my assistant, and it's not his. Now, right here, that pissed me off. Pissed me off. Yes. It's because where the fuck does Don get off being a hotshot, throwing my shit in the trailer, or excuse me, just dumping it in the basket and then spitting in it, so Bart has to stare at it and I have to deal with the fact that you're a sick fucking pig fuck you sick fucking bastard and because Don doesn't have a personal assistant yeah and then now Don grabs grabs the Perrier water and drinks it down like it's like it's nothing like I said to you before and, and no, no, I'm just pissed. Bon, Don Barris doesn't have the right to fuck with Bart. Don't okay. allow him to do this. I don't like it when he does this shit. He's a punk. I know. No, no, does he see you? No, no, I'm being real nice to Bart. I'm trying to tell Bart, look. Now Don Barris grabs a piece of bologna and starts to shove it in his mouth. Get over here, Perry. Now. Get over here. It's like, fuck you, Don. You're not my boss. You're just another fucking actor in this movie. Sit the fuck down. Definitely the stars ego. Now, now here's where Mogul's definitely the stars egos are about to clash. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Cuz he knows I'm the lead actor and he's nothing but a piece of trash. He's nothing but an audience warm-up act. That is it. That's as far as he goes in life. Now, here's where Bart is is not sure if he should hand me water or give it to Don. And Don's trying to, to beg for Bart to give him water. Bart kept bringing me food, and I didn't want it. I didn't ask for it, and when I and I don't want Bart. Go outside. Get outside now. You you. I don't need. Oh, if they want you to stand here, fine. I don't need any food. Please. No, but you, you said before. You said you know Bart come out over here and, and stand here. 
on screen. Where was? Where am I? Oh, I'm telling you like I'm telling you now. Stop. I don't need. I don't need any food. And when I need food, I'll ask for it. So right now. And you know, will I hire you as my personal assistant? Maybe in the future, yes. Right now, I don't need. It. I don't need food. Can I get you to leave? Can I get you to leave, please? You don't want, you don't I don't need you here. Now, here's where William the refrigerator Perry comes in. No, I don't need you. Okay. And let me finish this. Uh, thank you. There's Ernie Banks. Pleasure to meet the both of them. Never. Oh, that, that was so cool. When I met the fridge, it was like so cool. What a pleasure it was to to uh, have William the refrigerator Perry come into the uh, studio and, and meet me. I mean, it was like wow. Super Bowl 20, man. Bert, Super Bowl 20. Now. now I'm getting Bert to realize, look, I don't, I don't need, I don't need Bert right now. And now Don Barris is trying to tell me something. So it's like, shut the fuck up. And then I just blew up at him. <laughs> Would you get up the fuck outside? Well, I just was getting stuff for you. I don't need it. You don't have to eat it. I just got it for you. Okay, well. All right, I please. So that's why I hold on to it. Well, it takes me so long to go to get it, so that. Well, you know, look, I don't need. When you're hungry. I know you are. I'm not hungry. Okay. Thank you. I'm trying. What's going on on screen is what he does to me. What he's doing to me right now. He's stand by me. The toilet, toilet paper. The toilet paper is like like a napkin, and he just keeps. I don't need it. I don't fucking need it. I've got this in my hand. School it. it. Keeps coming out. You don't need to keep yanking on it. It kept coming out. Sorry. Hey, the Jew just hacked. All right, now we got the um, the guys from Schindler's List, or 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 the bozos that were playing, uh, um, just you know some funny scene to just fuck with Windy City. Heat. So it's like, look, I don't want you guys fucking around. Excuse me. So if you're gonna do, you know, some funny ass scene here, yeah, I, I could use a little bit of that. Thank you. Okay, ho ho ho. Uh, what do I want here? It's all for you. Oh, thank you. Jeez. Yeah. It's all so for me. Here, Bart is handing me a sandwich with a banana and stuff, and pff, like normal, they're always trying to feed me. And I don't want it. And Don's trying to grab my food when Don's not even being, even being handed food. Keep your hands in your lap. Now ask me. May I have a banana? Put it. Don is not. Ask. All right. May I please have the banana? Oh no. <laughs> Don has no fucking manners, and I'm and I'm trying to teach him manners by you know, look. Oh, now this scene's fucking hilarious. Right as I'm eating, Don goes and throws the fucking ball and hits me right in the face. Oh, it was aimed right at his chest. Yeah, I got my hands full with food. He knows for a fucking fact there's no way I'm going to be able to catch the basketball. So that's why he threw it in my face. I didn't, li I didn't like the way it felt. It stung. I mean, it wasn't like a... It wasn't like when Don threw the football at his house and hit me in the nuts. Ansel Adams, um, he's, he does real good art. He's a good photographer and everything. But now we're we're doing this scene in the back alley where I'm doing these fucking push-ups, and I mean they they only got me, well, they only got me where you can see I could only do like four or five. But I mean Ansel Adams. I was down there, I must have been doing like 20 or 30 push-ups. <clears throat> now you got these uh, merchandise guys here coming out with uh, pictures of um, of uh, me with the pouch. And they fucked up. I don't like that they fucked up the way I really look in real life. They took me and they made me a fat fuck rather than the guy that's, that's in shape. And they took the fat fuck, Don Barris, and they tried to make it look like he's in shape when he's not in shape. Other brim than this brim right here. That's my that's my hat. This type of hat. It's got to be a quality hat, but my name is not on it. Yeah, here we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
being, being part of the merchandise was really nice. Okay, here comes uh, now. There's Mole. Mole, yeah, Mole. Well, here's where I mentioned that Mole was on drugs since he was a little kid. And now there comes Don. And they make Don look like he's in shape when he's a fat fuck. And then they throw me out looking like a big fat monster when I'm really in shape. But they try to make it look like I'm 270 pounds. The doll, the doll looked like I'm a, like I just said, like I'm a fat fucking monster. And they're trying to make Don Barris look like he's in shape when he's a fat fucking pig. And now, now, when I see all this merchandise, I liked what I saw, but some of the stuff I didn't approve of because it wasn't the type of stuff I would put out there on the market with my name on it. For example, the fedora brims in blue, in pink, in yellow, in, uh, in beige. No, no, no. My fedora brims are the hats that I wear. Bobcat makes up this real nice table. Okay, here's the favorite scene that a lot of people love to see the fury come out of me. Because here's where I was going to kill Mole. I knew exactly what the fuck was going on. All right? <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I knew that, okay, we have to deal with this new investor. <clears throat> Bobcat pulls me aside and he says that we've got a new investor that's going to take over the the investments for Windy City Heat. And I'm thinking, mm hmm, there's only one guy that's going to come in that door that's going to fuck it all up. And I doubt if it's at all going to be done. Then... The door opens. The money, listen, there the he is. Oh, well, hey, man. Oh, what? A birthday party's going to happen here? You know, like, oh, wow, something special's going to go on. And I'm like, wait a second. No, 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 no. You don't touch a fucking thing on this table. And I grab both of his arms. And he's like, get your hands off me. So then I let go. And right when I let go, as I'm like two, two, maybe three feet away from the table, he goes, he goes and knocks the table down, and you can see where he just knocks the table over, and he goes, oh no, oh no. Now I'm just fucking pissed. And, and, I, and I just knew, oh, this is great. Thanks, Mole. Thanks, Mole. I was, I felt like shit. But now I'm gonna kill that fucking guy. Okay, here comes, here comes uh, Fat Piglet Uncle Fester. And now, now, Mole smells like weed beyond belief. Oh, yeah, look at Mole saying that I did it. You could only know, you could only see that Mole knocked over the table. Here's the, here's the investor, the guy that played as <laughs> Hiro Nima, Hiroshimo Nagasaki. Yeah, right. Yeah, that was one storm and then another storm. And I'm about to fucking rip your head off, you son of a bitch. I was worried that we lost all our money. That we're not going to get a dime. And, uh, and I'm about to kill this guy. He's eating donuts off the floor. And he deserves to die. And I'm going to kill that piece of fucker. I wasn't guilty of nothing. The only guilty I am is guilty that I'm working with a couple of assholes. But I'll say this, those two assholes made me the star. And I thank the both of them. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be where I am today. I'm at, I'm at the top of the game. Well, pff, I only wish I was at the top of the game. I hope and dream that I'm going to be at the top of the game. But yeah, you see where I say that he's just a fucking prick, and and we were supposed to be the big three, the big three of what? The big three losers. And ugh, as I drove away in the night, it's like this is fucking over. But then comes mon then comes Monday morning, when we have the meeting. I want a mole fired because all he knows how to do is cause trouble. And he never, 
does things to make things work. I mean, he just kept making it look fucked up. Thought because he sees I'm funny, and he's not funny. He's only a hack. He's only a hack. Like Don Barris is only a hack. Don Barris is not a funny stand-up comic. He's a funny hack comedian. That I will admit about Don Barris. A hack, a hack comic is somebody that that only uh, you know chews people down. That only insults others. That only makes people look like shit. There's one thing that I can tell my fans, it's this. It's that Don Barris and Walter Malinsky are not true actors, that I'm the true actor. Who's the true star of Windy City Heat? It's me! (coughs) Okay, the guy with no shirt, I don't know who that guy was, but my girlfriends loved loved him when they saw uh, the scene where he opened up the door. Everybody's been asking me all across the fucking planet. People are emailing me. Are, is there going to be a Windy City Heat 2? Even Angus Young. Okay? Because I know Angus on MySpace.com. Angus Young of ACDC asked if there's going to be a Windy City Heat 2. And I says, I'm not sure. Uh, John Quincy Adams calls me telling me this good news that it's somebody that, that I dealt with in the past. It's like, oh, God. Oh, God. Here's Yergi, Mr. Hotshot. Yergi is the guy that you see right here where he takes my fucking painting and robs me by telling me he's giving me uh, $50,000 and he throws me this pe- this thing of money. And what do I do? When I, get, when I get to my car and I unravel it, it's just a bunch of shredded paper. Wrapped up. I don't want more. So I lost over fifty thousand dollars for a painting that I gave Yergi. I was pissed. I was fucking pissed. I guess not now. Yergi claims to be uh, a porn, a porn star, film or creator, or whatever. I wouldn't want to do a Yergi porn. I'm in the Screen Actors Guild and I'm after. Uh, now this calendar here where I have uh, Bart walking through, that's the Master Graphics calendar for 2003, since this was two, December 2002 that we were filming this. And that's the calendar I went to give to Bobcat Goldthwait for the year. Now Yergi and uh, St- and uh, um, uh, Stenlana and um, uh, uh, I forget the two girls' names. Excuse me, but they're in my trailer. And um, when I saw this site, it was like, I only wish that I could have her go down on me. But he was there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, see where I say, like, I'm in the Screen Actors Guild. There's no way I can do a fucking porn. He's got a big cock, and if the girls like him, fine. But I mean, as long as I got him, that's fine with me. I, Yergi had a dick, and I don't care. It's not for me to fucking go down on. Fridge was cool, man. I loved working with that guy. He was a great guy to work with. But meeting him was like amazing. Now, now the fridge is in this uh, scene where he's he's waking up and he finds out that his refrigerator has been stolen. And my job is to retrieve his refrigerator. Now he's got Stan. Stefana, Stefana, that's it. Stefana's behind. Like, here's this fucking babe in in the fridge's apartment. I know, exactly sicko. What, I know exactly what sicko. I'm trying to remember my lines. You repeat, 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 repeat. And the more you repeat, the easier it is to remember. I know exactly what sicko, and I'm gonna find him. And I'm gonna find. Yeah. One thing. Yeah. Too late to get Carson Daly. Couldn't we get from when Yergi calls? 
goes the Bobcat and goes, hey, will we still get Carson Daly? I wanted to punch Yergi right in the fucking Carson mouth. And then I said, Carson Daly does not work. Because he sucks. He's not an actor. He's just a talk show host. Wait a second. Carson's not Italian like I'm Italian. Carson Daly... Carson Daly's a Jew boy trying to be a WAP. It's it's kind of slang. You know, when I say he's a Jew boy, he's not really Jewish. I think he's Irish, like Don. But, uh... Who's another geek? But, um... Yeah, Carson's not an actor. He's a talk show host. They took the fridge and fridge stone. Oh shit. How am I supposed to chill food? How? I'm a gonna how am I supposed to chill food, man? How am I supposed to They took the fridge and fridge stone, how am I supposed to chill food out? That scene just made me laugh. A rim job is fucking somebody in the ass or tongue in their ass. No way. Yuri Yurgi wants me to do a rim job. In other words, he wants me to he wants he wants me to fucking deal with some guy pulling his pants down so I can do a rim job. Rim jobs are only the only rim job I will do is with my girl or my girls. And right, rim jobs are, are from Europeans or those people. And this is an American made film. We don't have them on a, a, a G rated, a PG rated, an R rated, or an NC 17 rated film. Yeah, we do. We have them in Chatsworth, the porn capital of the world. I have this one girlfriend whom I'm still banging. The most exotic feeling ever was having this. This real light tongue texture, just barely. Oh, talking about touch. I'm talking about when around she uh. Around your around your butthole. When she tongued my ass. I mean, it was the most. This chick just, you know, he just ever. barely had her tongue touching the hairs around my ass, and my legs were up in the air. Oh man. Oh God. Did I like it? Man, my, my legs were like up. Like like a donkey's tail. You know when 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 they're about ready to go to the bathroom and you see the donkey tail go up? That's when my legs were up. Shut the fuck up. Sticks and stones will break some bones. Uh in this scene. Uh, I, I was perfect. I mean, there were so many people that, that came up to me and says, you just did such a good job in that scene. Because I was serious. Sticks and stones will break some bones. Fridge even thought it was good, but then again, for all I know, it could have been just an act. gentlemen, I'm switching some stuff. There's trouble brewing here. But there's trouble and there's brewing. trouble brewing up, and I'm making it look like I'm stirring a, a, a big, uh, a big pot of whatever. You know, it could be anything. It's just what you know. I'm a method actor, and I do things with method. And uh, I do things the way I was taught. Sure, in in a gook film, fine, but not in my movie. This is okay, great. when when you're when you're you wanted me to put a dinosaur in this fucking picture. It was like, well, what are you fucking stupid? This is Chicago. This is not New York. This is not a gook film. Smoothness. <laughs> but there's trouble brewing up. Stone can feel it. This might just mean. Oh, towards the end of the movie, and, and I'm talking. I'm doing like the closure of the film. Where he brings in this big fan and they just want to blow me over. They wanted the big fan because it's the Windy City and I should be uh, <clears throat> dealing with with you know wind, like like you normally do when you're downtown. You could like, for example, walk around the uh, John Hancock Building and get wind blowing at your face or something. It worked. It worked really well.
All right, it looks like this is the last scene of the movie. Unreal, unbelievable. Can't believe that we're done with a film in one week. I was I was happier than you could imagine. I was shocked that I did such a good job, and it's like everybody's like, "You're you're amazing. You are amazing." To finish a film in one week. Now now here's Don Barris goes and grabs me and pulls me down like we're on a fucking football field or something. Got to tackle scary. Let's tackle him. Let's jump on his ass. Stop drinking. This is your last warning. Okay, six Stop. weeks later. Oh, now we're over at the Hyatt Hotel. And and um, I says to uh, Mole, you know, he just got done drinking six beers down in the bar downstairs. And now here's here's the dressing room on the sixth floor. This is a tape recorder with John Quincy Adams' voice. And he arranged a one-time only shooting. And and there's only one and we gotta be there at a certain time at this theater in Westwood. Because there's only okay, it's six four it's six forty three PM right now. There's going to be a one-time showing of the film, and we got to get there by 7.30, and if we're not there, we're going to be fucked. And they grab this this uh, uh, appetite thing, and they're fucking around. They're just wasting time. So Don Barris takes off his pants. He's in his underwear, goes out on the patio and screams out, I'm naked! And then Mole goes, would you go out there and get him? So like a dick, I go and walk outside, and right as I walk outside, Don walks inside and they shut the door and they lock the door on me. I'm uh, six floors up, scared out of my fucking wits that I'm on this patio. And the only way in is either jumping off the patio or fucking sitting on the patio, scared out of my fucking wits and staying completely silent and letting them think that Okay, fuck it. Oh, I knocked. I definitely knocked on the door. I tried kicking the fucking patio door in, but that glass was plexiglass. It wasn't glass. Plexiglass you can't kick through. Then then Mole has got the phone off the hook when they're supposed to uh, call us up in the room and he know the limo driver's there. Now, the limo, now we finally get dressed and everything, and uh, Travis... Downstairs, he's the limo driver. Cool. <coughs> Travis Bickle. Now Don Barris is fucking around, wasting time. And now we're trying to get to the film premiere, and I'm trying to tell these assholes, let's go. Look, and Don Barris is signing autographs, and he's just wasting more time, wasting more time. Okay, now we get in. No, now I'm pissed. Because they wouldn't listen to me. I'm the star of the movie. We got to get there before 7.30. And it's 7.25 now. Let's go. Let's go. I'm going. Let's go. And I'm fucking furious. Come on. I'm going. Because they think that they won't listen to me because they think they're in charge. I'm the star of the movie. I am. I. Let me repeat myself. I am the star of the film. Now Don Barris gets waters and starts chucking them out the window. So so he can be an asshole and make make uh, Travis waste more time. So then we gotta stop at this convenience store. I'm fucking furious. I am fucking furious. Now we stop over at the Sunrise Food Mart off of um, Highland and Sunset across the street from uh, the, the Hollywood High School. When when this guy recognized me, he was like happier than hell. Who else has a fucking fuzzball curly head of hair as long as mine and runs around with a black leather jacket and a fedora brim on? Who else? And I'm like, oh, that's that's nice, all right. But we gotta get to the fucking premiere. Let's go. Let me get my water so we can go. Wait a minute. Are you here now? Wait a minute. Now these now these two girls that come out 
of the back, his daughters, or, or best known as his daughters, for this for this uh, shoot. They were cute. I wouldn't want to have sex with either of them. I'm just not interested in them. They're not my type. They're, there's just, there's, well, I don't know why I should say they are my type or they're not my type, but um, I'm not in the chicks that have dots between their heads. You know, what are we looking for? Uh, coffee? I mean, I drink enough coffee. I don't need some chick to have a, a dot between her head to tell me if uh, coffee's ready or not. <clears throat> if the wife, if she wiped the dot off, maybe. I'd let her go down on me, but uh, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, the, Travis goes and fucks up the kisses that I'm supposed to be getting. Well, now if Travis is gonna fuck it up, let's get to the fucking premiere now. What is under my jacket, what I have on is my pouch. My pouch carries my business cards, it carries my pens, it carries my wallet, my uh, uh, Palm Pilot, which is my appointment book, my, my date book, and my address book all in one. My medication, uh, condoms, um, what else do I have in there? Get the fuck to the field. See, I, I have my aspirin, I have my other pills, I have uh, my lactate pills, I have my condoms, <clears throat> I have my condoms, um, I don't have Spanish flying here, no. Oh, here's where Travis makes, makes uh, the remark about uh, me being a music promoter. As I mentioned that I have rock bands that I book and promote. Now Travis is trying to show me that he's a musician. He's in this shitty band that literally sucks, and I mean sucks. He sucks. He fucking sucks. He's got this lousy voice. And Mole and Don are like, they like him. <laughs> I'm fucking furious because here it is. It's almost five minutes before 9 p.m. We got a fucking movie premiere to get to. It's movie premiere time. Why are we wasting all this time? Why? Why? Why are we wasting all this time? We got to get over to the Crest Theater for our movie premiere. But no, what are we doing? We're jerking off. We're fucking off. I, I, I smirked about that. When he mentioned the word pussy, I smirked because I love chicks. I'm addicted to women. This movie's gotten me laid. I'll even tell you one story, which is kind of funny. We're at the Italian Film Festival, and there's this chick there, and we just got friendly with each other. So uh, he came back to my apartment with uh, and um, I did the night before, and uh, while well, is working on her computer, I was fucking... Uh, and the funny part about fucking he was after after the um, turn on portion when I stuck my dick inside her, it was like one bang, two bang, three bang, pop. I didn't even get to really fuck her. I exploded too soon, and she wouldn't let me explode again and again and again and again and again. Because I'm a I'm a you know I I'm a repetitious uh, orgasmist. I would not even allow you to even go down on me to get a fucking record deal. So go find some other fucking low life loser shit record label that sucks and can't sell a record for uh, even hookers that walk the streets for their fucking company to get a record deal. I admitted what happened with Randy Callahan. Let's see, 92, it's 13 years ago. 13 years! Oh, but you let it happen once, so you must be gay. 13 years! Like, I do it every Friday, or like I do it every day, or like I do it more than just this one time. Oh, yeah, and it was to do what? Be a fucking extra? But let me add this. What did Walt Randy also do for me? He got all three of my vouchers in so I could join SAG. Well, now that the whole nation knows this, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. I don't care. 
Here's where they show our big, uh, huge poster or on the marquee outside the Crest Theater in Westwood, and they got a beautiful photo of all of us. But the funny thing about it was they spelt my last name with a K on on the uh, um, <coughs> excuse me on the uh, um, the big the big marquee. But on but on the little poster you see my name spelt correctly. Well now now Mole and Don gave Travis a hundred dollars tip and Travis wants a hundred dollar tip from me and I don't have any money on me. Travis wants to fight me because I didn't give him a tip. And now now there's an interview guy outside the theater that, that's like, and now you, this is going to make you a big star. I'm going, this is amazing. I, I, I'm in shock. I can't believe this. And then Don's all jealous because he made the remark that that I'm uh, uh, involved with Britney Spears. <laughs> There's Travis comes running in and starts pushing me like, like be, I, I didn't beat him up because I'm at my, my own film premiere. It's like, why the fuck do I need to punch out some scumbag punk bastard that's jealous of me and my new fame. Okay, now here's here's the uh, usher of the theater, this black guy that's uh, starting shit with us and won't let us into the theater because because the, I guess the door is closed and you can't let anybody else in from the lobby. So uh, Don and Mole pull me aside and they go, Who's gonna what? Who's gonna get us into the theater? Stone Fury. And then Don goes, "Give me, give me the eye." I knew it would work because of the eye. And then they go, "Big three. And then it's, "Give me the eye." And now, and now the usher's thinking, like, "Uh oh." Look, man. I, I just better back off because this guy's gonna like kick my ass if I. Uh, Try to. So when I first walked in and I heard sticks and stones will break your bones, and and um, I just I smirked. I I loved what I saw, because they they uh, did some neat scenes. You know they chopped the film up right here, and they just did some special scenes out of the movie, and um, uh, I'm just looking at this flawless. My acting, flawless. My acting here is just flawless. And there's Lisa Cashel playing uh, Susan B. Anthony, a.k.a. Jiggly Wriggly, and she's just awesome. But, but now, right when I knocked over the... Uh, uh, now now I hit her with the red... I hit her with the wooden bat, and I just started busting up right when I was over there because it's like, this is great. And then I turned and Ernie Banks... Mr. Cub. Wow. Ernie Ernie's performance was nice, and the funny thing about it was that was really Ernie Banks. That was no fake. And that was the fridge. And the fridge's performance was also a good performance. So it was like, no problem, fridge. Yeah, that was that was the actual fridge. That was the actual fridge. That was the actual Ernie Banks. But that was not the actual um. The guy with the pizza. That was not um, Charlton Heston. That's not Charlton Heston. That's somebody else. Did anybody order a <coughs> His performance was good for this, but I was hoping to see Charlton Heston. I'm thinking this is great. This is awesome. Oh yeah, this is a winner. I'm really happy. Yeah, it's Shaitan, all right. Okay, Everybody? here's the closure. This is my performance be the place. is flawless. The windy city. Where I would see the place, and this would, and I would feel the windy city heat. And I mean. So Yuri had to have his way and put in the dinosaur. I thought that was kind of dorky, but uh, now I all of a sudden 
I'm standing there in, in the Crest Theater, and all of a sudden I see everybody stand up. And man, there I am, I'm about ready to start crying because, I mean, look at this. You see tears in my eyes just starting to happen. I mean, everybody's like on their feet and they're giving us a standing ovation. They were giving me a standing ovation because of our performance. And our performance was fantastic. There's Lisa. Made me feel great. My first major film, and I mean, a Top Gun winner. And even Yergi loved me, man. You, there's like, I can't believe this. And then now we got this guy named Jeff Pearson, who's the president of show business. And he's and he's now congratulating the uh, this year's Palme d'Or Awards for the short film festival. I'm crying, man. Like I am right now. Because seeing this fucking trophy just blew me away. Every time I see this movie, and I mean I've played it a lot, and I play it at home a lot, and I go to go to house parties, and I and I, you know, I'm always crying during this scene. This scene always puts me in tears. This is like the happiest moment of my life, man. It's it's just it's a great. It's a great moment, and I mean, I'm really happy, and I'm really thankful that I got something that I've busted my ass for for years. If I couldn't become a skateboarding champ, okay, what's gonna happen now? Grocery stores, that didn't work out so well, so acting, uh, being a comedian, and uh, me as a stand-up comic's not the greatest. Me in theatrical comedy is the best. And right now, I am like the best winner that could ever be seen on Westwood Boulevard outside the Crest Theater right there in Westwood. And if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be here right now. And thank you all because I am so proud of the, the other two assholes that I work with. And I am so thankful and so happy that this is all finally after a decade come true and now we are winners well everybody's like really glad that uh, this has all happened and there I am my last name spelled with a K all right now they're now we're all like partying this is great and we're partying and having fun and moles being real happy and makeup girl and myself and I'm happy and proud and I'm happy that Don and Mole helped get me a fucking real real acting job now here's here's uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live the second taping of Jimmy Kimmel Live I was, yeah, was kind of nervous my first talk show it was it was fun because I know that Don Mole and myself would take the show over and now, now Mole, uh, Jimmy said something about hijinks. Tell us the story. Tell us the story. He totally loves dudes. And I wanted to kill somebody. Who's it next to me? Now, Tam, now Tammy Faye Baker, when I first met up with her, oh, we just started to make out. It, she's really got a hot body. But if she would take off that fucking makeup, <laughs> I would fuck her. Yeah, fuck her. But uh, <clears throat> I would want that makeup off of her face. I mean, she's got all that makeup on her face because she's uh, nervous or, or uh, doesn't want people to see the real her. Being put through all this shit that I went through with those two guys was the anything that I would do to be a star. And I don't need to go through that shit again. Oh, I owe to Jimmy because I'm more of a star than they are. All those fucking guys know how to do is fucking interview people. Okay, I'm the actor, I'm the star. All they know how to do is ask questions and that's about it. 
And if this prove if, if if this movie has proved anything, it's that I'm a star, and there isn't a fucking thing that anybody can take of this away from me. Not at all. I'm a star, I'm the star of this fucking picture, I'm the star of Hollywood, and I'm gonna fucking show everybody out there who the fuck's gonna win it all! Oh! All right, I want to thank you guys for listening to the true story and the true behind-the-scenes version of Windy City Heat. I've got to thank Don and Mole from the bottom of my heart. I might act like I hate those two. I might act like I don't like those two. But down deep inside my heart, I love the both of them. They're like a family to me and the three of us are nothing but the big three. The big three assholes in Hollywood! Ow! 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 (laughs) (laughs) Fuck!